In the video today, we're answering a viewer question because Scott S. asks us, when you look at pictures of individual snowflakes, the snowflakes are clear. I was just wondering why snow is white and not clear then. First, it's important to understand what's going on when we see certain colors. Visible light from the sun or other light sources comes in a variety of wavelengths that human eyes interpret as colors. When light interacts with an object, the wavelengths that the object reflects or absorbs determine what colors our eyes perceive. When an object reflects all of the wavelengths of light from the sun that are in the visible spectrum, the object appears to be white. Something like a fire truck appears to be red because the paint reflects back certain wavelengths in the red area of the visible spectrum while absorbing all of the rest. This now brings us to water, snowflakes, and snow. Pure water is quite clear, meaning the wavelengths of light more or less pass right through it, rather than being reflected back to your eyeballs. Individual snowflakes are somewhat clear, but a large concentration of these ends up being white, meaning most of the light is reflected back rather than passing straight through. So why is this? The key here is the way that light interacts with the mass of complex shaped snowflakes and air that you know of as snow. Much like with water, light bends when it enters into a piece of ice. This causes ice cubes or icicles to appear murky even when they're made from clear water. The tiny snowflakes or ice crystals that make up a snowbank all each bend light somewhat like an ice cube, though not quite as uniformly due to their varied and complex shapes. So when one of these tiny, beautiful ice crystal formations bends light, that light ultimately encounters another ice crystal in the clump of snowflakes where it is also bent, and then another, and another, and another. The process continues until the light reflects back out of the snow rather than passing straight through it into the ground. Some wavelengths do become absorbed into the snow, more so when impurities like dirt are introduced, but with fresh snow, the majority of the light waves will ultimately be reflected, and thus the sunlight will appear white to you. All that said, you may have noticed that snow can look blue under the right circumstances. The white appearance happens when light reflects off ice crystals only a relatively small number of times, not penetrating very much into the snow. However, light that manages to penetrate deeper into the snow tends to see much longer wavelengths, which exist on the red end of the color spectrum. However, light that manages to penetrate deeper into snow tends to see the longer wavelengths, which exist on the red end of the color spectrum, get absorbed a little bit, leaving the shorter wavelengths on the blue side of the spectrum to be reflected back at you. So what allows the light to penetrate more deeply in certain snow? Well, that's all to do with how compact it is. This simultaneously fuses the snowflakes into larger bundles of ice and gets rid of much of the tiny air pockets in the snow, resulting in whitish blue looking snow and ice. And now for some bonus facts. Contrary to popular belief, if you were to look at the sun from space and didn't horribly damage your eyes in the process, you'll see that the sun looks white in the human visible spectrum, not yellow as it looks like from Earth. And now for another bonus fact. Polar bears appear mostly white for the same reason snow does. Their fur is not actually white, but made up of hollow translucent tubes. The light hits the hair and gets scattered around in a similar fashion to snowflakes, eventually getting reflected back out with very little absorption, making them appear white. In fact, polar bear skin is actually quite black. It used to be thought that the combination of translucent tubes of hair and black skin helped polar bears keep warm, but this has since been proven to be incorrect. In fact, in a 1988 study performed at St. Lawrence University in New York, it was found that a one-fifth inch strand of polar bear hair only manages to conduct one one-thousandth of a percent of ultraviolet light directed through the translucent hair tube. What actually keeps polar bears warm is a combination of a very thick layer of fat and their dense fur. This fur and fat is so effective as an insulation that they can easily become overheated in open air, even at extreme negative temperatures. The fat layer also allows them to swim around in frigid waters while their fur does nothing to protect them from the cold. This is also why mother polar bears tend to try to avoid taking their cubs for swims until they've built up a good layer of fat. And incidentally here, a bonus fact within a bonus fact, there is no real difference between fur and hair. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, give us a thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe. Brand new videos just like this every day of the week. And as always, thank you for watching.